Hey guys, Smithy with Minute Maintenance. Now today I'm coming at you from inside the garage. Got my heater going. It's 20 degrees outside, but the projects don't stop just because it's cold. Today we have 2014 Dodge Grand Caravan sitting behind me. It's not shifting right. Let's get under the hood and see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, guys, so on this 2014 Dodge Grand Caravan, the issues that the owner is having is that she has explained to me intermittently. Now, every once in a while, she says did a lot more in last winter during the cold temperatures, but just started doing it again for her, which obviously had a concern, and she should have reached out and gotten taken care of this past year, but we're going to take care of her now. She says when she's out driving around, if she goes shopping, grocery store, mall, whatever, if she's in a parking space and she puts the car into reverse to back out of the stall, everything's going fine. But the moment she shifts in the drive and feels the transmission, try to shift over the drive, the whole engine stalls. Then she has to put it back in park, turn the car off, turn it back on. Sometimes it'll go right away. A couple of the times if she goes from reverse in the drive again, it stalls again. So that's the issue we're dealing with. Everything on this car seems to be running just fine. When it, Once it gets going driving down the road, it's not having any shifting issues. It's not shifting hard, she hasn't explained. And she can't force it to do it. It just does it on its own randomly. And it's not throwing any codes. I, even though it's not throwing in check engine codes, I went ahead and put my code reader on there anyway. If you guys want to know how to use a code reader, look back to one of the first videos here on this channel, Minute Maintenance, on how to use an OBD2 scanner. But there are no codes, no check engine lights. But all my research says, based on what's being described, we have a shift solenoid issue, which means we got to open this hood, remove a bunch of stuff, and get to the top of the transmission. So... We got our work ahead of us today. All right, guys, so under the hood of this 2014 Dodge Grand Caravan, we have the 3.6 liter VVT motor. Now, this has the 62 TE, 62 Tom Edward transmission, and it's having shifting issues again when it goes from park, reverse, neutral, no issues. But when she goes from reverse gear, backing the car up into drive, it stalls on her. And it's very intermittent. It's not a, a constant thing. Doing my research, I've seen other people have this issue every time, unless they're giving the the car a lot of gas, get a bit of a running start when shifting in the drive, which is obviously hard on your transmission, the vehicle won't go. Um, that's other issues I've seen online when the problem becomes more consistent. For her, it's intermittent, which leads me to believe it's a, a shift solenoid, also known as a VLP, Victor Lincoln Paul VLP sensor. Um, variable force sensor is another word used to describe it, but it's 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 a shift solenoid. It sits in the transmission, and it tells the transmission when to shift. And when it's having issues, it can cause the transmission to to freak out and the engine to stall to protect itself, almost like going into a, a bit of a limp mode. So the sensor is not working right. It's it's common. This car has van has over one hundred fifty thousand miles. Things need to be replaced, solenoids need to be replaced. If you guys think to other solenoids in the vehicle, like your starter on your car, sometimes when you crank your car, the starter works just fine. Everything starts up, no issues. But then other times, it doesn't want to. You got to give it a couple of goes. That's your solenoid. That's the, the starting solenoid on the starter that's causing those issues. Similar issue here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to open up the top end of this transmission. And we're going to get to the shift solenoid. Hopefully that's going to solve all our issues. Let's get after it. First thing we're going to do so we can get to the transmission, which is actually located underneath the battery and battery boxes. We're going to take our battery in, well, battery box out. Now, whenever removing a battery, whenever connecting to a battery, you want to deal with the negative wire when it comes to taking things off first. So we're taking the battery out. We want to disconnect the negative wire. So in this one, we need a 12 millimeter socket. There we go. Go ahead and break it loose there. So we can finish her off by hand. All right, and we'll set that off to the side. So more secure. All right there, it's not gonna cause any more issues. Now for the positive side, it wants a 10 millimeter socket. So we have 12 on the negative for this. We got 10 for the positive, same thing. Let's go ahead and loosen her up. Finish her off by hand here. Wop, 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 wop. Pull the positive off. And set it off securely to the side, like so. Now our battery will be able to be removed as soon as we loosen up that bolt right there. All right, now we're loosen up the clamp that holds the battery in the battery box. We got ourselves a 13 millimeter socket here. Go 
to find the right angle sometimes. And once that bolt is nice and loosened up, you can finish it off by hand, move the top of the clamp. Now the battery should come right out. We go and set that off to the side. And next, we gotta loosen up bolt one, two, and hopefully, unless I'm missing something, we should be able to get that battery box out, minus a few clips here that are holding some of these wirings in place. But let's go ahead and uh, work on those bolts. All right. Thankfully, it's also a 13 millimeter, the same size needed to remove the clamp that held in the battery box. So that's convenient. Get these loosened up. Find myself an extension. Like I always say, try to keep some extensions on hand. All right, got myself a nice little extension here, so I should make getting this off a lot easier, especially now that she's already broken loose. There we go. Bada bing. There we go. See if we can drag her out of there. Nice. Now this one might be a little more tricky to get to. We're going to have to work some angles here. That extension might not be my friend. After all, in this one, that might be a hindrance. Let's see what we can do. Oh, there we go. Slowly but surely, she's coming. All right, so we got one. We got two out of the way. And there's actually a third one right down here. Same size, 13 millimeter. We'll loosen this one up. Hopefully this box will be out of our way. All right, got the third bolt out. And look at all that light that they put on there, guys. Look at that. That is crazy. They were... Really worried about this battery box coming out and I guess flying half an inch up and hitting the roof of the of the hood. I don't know, but that seems extremely excessive. Anyway, now the box is loose. It's gonna go through and cut the zip ties on some of these connectors because we can always just zip tie them back in place later. Um if they are gonna be in our way, so we'll go ahead and get our wire cutters and take care of that. Now some of these are actually just pushed on pressure clips and you could try to work them out of the position that they're in but guys it's not worth it zip ties are what 50 cents for a pack of a million of them it's not worth the drama of trying to save those plastic clips and yanking on whatever hose or wire it's connected to possibly causing damage to those things let's go ahead and cut them off and Reattach them later. All right, now what's in the bottom there? There we go. Now, battery box is out of the way. Ugh. And we're almost there. What we want is that guy right there that I'm tapping on. I'm gonna get as much access to that as we can. So let's try to figure out a way to pull some of these hoses out of the way. All right, guys, looks like just to keep things in a good enough type position. Sometimes in life, you can't go for perfection. You don't. These wires are actually pretty, pretty thick and they're pretty well in here. So we're just going to have to do the best we can to work around. Now, what we're going to want to do now is get this connector off right here. If you guys can see that, let me angle this camera a little bit better and let that focus. I want to get that connector off. Um, take your time. Be careful. It might be stuck. It might be a, a little stiff. It is plastic, guys, so don't get in here and just start manhandling this because if this breaks you're in a world of hurt this is your main electrical connection for your transmission if this thing is damaged this is expensive and it can be a big bear a real big bear to try to get this thing to be replaced so the way you get this off is underneath here i'm rubbing my finger you got this big plastic piece up top you can see let me see if i can zoom in here focus up all right big plastic piece right here this black tab directly underneath there you want those separated so push that down you see how they came right up guys see that again big plastic piece you can pull on it pull on it she'll make some noises maybe okay but that's not going to work black tab directly underneath of it I'm rubbing my finger on it right now give it a little bit of push in and down and might have to get your thumb up there to separate the black the great part but there she is 
push that down, separate the gray part, then bend the plug the rest of the way, and Jimmy are free, and you're good to go. Alright guys, now that we're all the way back to normal, zoom, take this gray piece here once separated, push it all the way down. Now go ahead and listen to this. Take a quick listen. You heard that? Pulled itself right out on her own. Then you can work it free. And now that plug can be shimmied off to the side. And we'll work on getting this black piece off here, which this is just a uh it's just a deadening, a sound deadening cover that they decided to put on here. So we'll go ahead and work around and get this thing removed. Just because I went every inch possible, I just went ahead and I pulled off this cover here. It's just held in pressure clips. Just pressed on, so just give it a, a pull straight up and she pops right out. Now we got ourselves a little bit extra room, a little bit extra light coming through. So we can try to get this sound deadening cover figured out. All right, guys, so far on this one, I just kind of went around with a uh, floodhead screwdriver here, working the edges, and she kind of just popped right off because I didn't see any sort of bolt or anything holding it in place, unless there's something further down underneath that I'm missing. But right now, just kind of working around, working around, and trying to shimmy it loose and get this particular cover off. If I were to damage it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me. I doubt it's protecting protecting the car from that much noise inside the engine, inside the uh, cab. It's supposed to be limiting noise. I don't know how much it's actually doing that. Obviously, they wanted it on there for a reason, so if we can save it, great. If not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it if... Uh, as long as this car is shifting right, that's more important. They can turn the radio up if the transmission is being too loud for them. All right, boys and girls, we're directly underneath here. Coming to the bottom of this thing. And I came underneath and started working it free with my fingers. And it's actually wrapped around this dipstick right here. So we're going to try to slide it up and over the transmission. Well, not even a dipstick because... They don't give you a dipstick for these cars. We'll figure out a hack for that later because they uh, don't give you a way to really check your transmission fluid. They want you to take it to the shop. So you can pay them money to check your transmission fluid. It's very kind of them. I ran into a bit of resistance from the windshield washer container here. Thankfully, this thing just appears to uh, slide into a bracket. So if we can just shimmer up and slide her out just to give ourselves a couple extra inches of clearance every bit counts there we go boom she's free all right getting that windshield wash reservoir out of the way I had to take the hose off and we lost some fluid down there but that's alright fairly certain that wasn't and I apologize, that was the uh, radiator coolant reservoir, not the windshield washer fluid reservoir. Don't put wiper fluid in that thing. And she slides off. There we go. Work her out, work her out. This might be the worst video so far. I cannot get a good angle. Thank you very much, Dodge. All this crap in the way. Try and get that thing back in there. My goodness, we're going to pull her out from the bottom. Golly, what a crap show that was! All right, now that we got that out of the way, the main target of our operations we want to get this cover off so you can see. Right here, we got all these bolts. I don't know exactly how many. We're gonna find out together, but it sure looks like a lot of them. We're gonna have to get around all the edges and pull this front cover off. So let's figure out what size uh, socket we need and get to work. All right, guys, went and broke out Big Bertha, hoping to get a little more light here. We got a five sixteenths on all of these nuts. 
bolts, whatever they're about to have to be. Let's see. Oh, that's going to be a bolt. Bolt on some, nuts on the others, it looks like. Let's go ahead and loosen these up. And this is going to take some time, ladies and gentlemen. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, any concerns, anything particularly you want to see done on the vehicle, feel free to drop a comment below, like, subscribe, all that good stuff that everybody else says. I'm not really in it for the likes or the subscribes. I figure I'm out here wrenching anyway. Might as well do something else useful. Although, holding this camera makes things a little more difficult, I'm not going to lie. But it makes me seem a little more sane since I'm always out here talking to myself anyway. If a neighbor happens to wander by and see me talking to myself and I'm holding the camera, maybe it'll be more inclined to wave and not try to avoid me thinking I'm crazy. Alright, so I got one bolt off. And I got this silly washer in the way, stopping me from being able to get to the next one. I'm not quite sure what its purpose in life is, other than to give me a headache and anger me and test my patience. I don't know. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder why people do the things they do. And I'm sure there's a purpose to them, but as you can see, I generally don't give a damn. I'm here to put vehicles on the road. I ain't gonna be held back by no washer. Get out of there. All right. Now this one might still be 5 16ths. Let's take a peek. I went ahead and got myself a... Dropped it. Pick her up where she at. There should be. Longer 5 16ths to see if I can connect. And it isn't. All right. Well, let's figure that out. All right, so the first bolt here was a 5 16th, and this one over here, which uh, the longer stud here, is a 10 millimeter, which is the same size we use to remove the positive on the battery terminal. So that's weird. We went from 5 16th to 10 millimeter. Interesting. We'll go ahead and loosen that sucker up, get to work on the rest. All right, guys, I'm going to show you something. As I'm taking the bolts out, what I like to do is have a clean working space. Um, I got my workbench over here. And what I like to do is I like to put the bolts. I'm taking a lot of bolts out of like a transmission pan, or oil pan. Um, I've ran into it in the past on certain vehicles where the bolts are different lengths. Okay, so you're going through. They might be the same size head, but they're different lengths as far as how far deep in they go. So I always like to just to, out of an abundance of caution. Now these might all turn out. Obviously these ones here are different. These two are identical. The rest of them might be trying to be exactly the same here, but I don't know that going in. I won't know that till they're all out. So I like to set them in the order I take them out. So I took this one out first. Then obviously you guys watch them take that one out. Then I decided to go to the left. And so as I take them out, I'll bring them over here and I'll set them out on the workbench in the order I took them out. That way when I put them back in, they go back in the exact same spot. They go right back to the home. Let's tap it in, tap it in back to its home. So as I'm working my way down, I found an extension here on my 5 16ths. Gives me a little bit of clearance around the depth of this pan so I can get to some of those. Let's see if I get this angle right there so I can get to some of those further back. If you look along the side there, let's go and set that sucker down. Look on the side here, like that one right there that I'm pointing to. All right, guys, now we're under the vehicle. So some of these, I got about four or five bolts off the pan there from the top. Now we're on the bottom to finish out these several bolts here. And they're going up that side, and hopefully that cover comes off, and we should have direct access to our solenoid finally and get that changed. But some of these bolts you got to get from the top. Others you got to get from the bottom. Let's keep wrenching. Hey guys, check it out now. I have every bolt out there. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen bolts holding that whole pan in place. Why does it make me one? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, thirteen bolts holding them all in place. They they were all identical except for these very obvious ones, which one which uh, were not. You'd be able to figure out where they went. Two bottom corners. 
in the top right corner. Um, but again, you don't know going in. You don't know. And so I like to put them in that order. That way there's no mistake. That way, okay, so this one is a quarter inch longer, which I have had. It depends on the depth, especially when you're doing things like carburetors. It depends on the depth and of the, the length and the, the basic dimensions of whatever you're removing. So I always like to do this. It's better safe than sorry when it comes to certain things. You don't want to put the wrong size bolt in the wrong thing about. Now we come over here. <clears throat> and there's our pan. All the bolts are removed. Let me go ahead and get my light up here so it's actually useful. Ooh. Underneath. Whoop. She comes with me. It's nice to have magnetic lights. I know you guys are thinking, where'd Big Bertha go? She was getting hot. I had her set up here. Um, burnt my arm a couple times and actually started to uh, deform the plastic here. I just got that light. I didn't realize that it was hotter than the sun. Um, it felt good being it's a cold winter day and I got my heater going, which is nice, but I have to have my garage door open to, to ventilate as well. So that's a bit of an issue, but that's, that's a me problem, not a you problem. All right, let's go ahead and get back to the task at hand. So I want to get that pan off. Let's take a screwdriver, flat blade. Don't go jamming in there, I'm trying to split the corner. Top of here, top of this one right there. You can see that little, there's a bit of an ear on top of the tab. So you can get, get the screwdriver right there. Just a little bit of pressure. A little bit of, I'm, I am pushing this way while pulling towards me. Just a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure. And you can see she's starting to open up. There she goes, she's starting to open up. And finish her off. And now we're everywhere. We're right where we want to be, guys. Honestly, there's no need for me to pull that pan off any further because what I'm going after is this solenoid right here. This is the shift solenoid, the, the VLP sensor, the variable force sensor. Lots of different names for the 62TE transmission. Now, if you need to get here because, gosh, you want to change the sensor, but you also want to change the whole valve body, which is this big cat right here, pull the rest of the cover off. And then you have to work off every single one of these bolts on the outside here, guys. That's not what we're doing today. But if, if you're here because you wanted the valve body removed, all of these bolts here, boom, 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 all the way around. It looks like to be 20 some of them. Those would hold the whole valve body in place. Okay? You have to remove all those so that you can get behind this plate to remove the bolts that hold this valve body in place. Today, thankfully, we just need to get that solenoid out. That's the cat we're after. Looks like we need ourselves a uh, T-style, hex-style, possibly, uh, bit to get that removed. So let's get that figured out. All right, guys, that janky little flash that was good enough for me to see, but my you guys deserve better. So I went ahead and broke Big Bertha out. I'll suffer the burns. And melting plastic for you guys, only because I care. Now, I don't know exactly what size this particular T5, T, Hex, thingamabob, star style. Get it better. Come on, focus. Focus. Basically, star pattern bit. I don't know why it's being a jack wagon right now. My camera doesn't want to focus star style bit it's not a star head it's got a bunch of different one two three four five six different blades on it um the set i have is old and rusty and everything's kind of just sitting loose in my box so i kind of just went through a bunch of them till i found the one that fit i'll go ahead and loosen it up Finish it off by hand. It does have a washer on it, guys, so I'm not sure that stays with it. The solenoid should. There we go. Just pop right out. There we go, guys. Now we got this connector down here. Looks like it's just your standard push connector. Possibly release that pl gray plastic clip. Or lift up on this. Okay. Let me go ahead and 
set you guys down so I can figure this out. Last thing I want to do is damage his wires, damage his actual connector. So what I'll do is I'll get the connector off and I'll walk you guys through how to do it. So I just need uh, two hands for this. All right, guys, again, that off is actually fairly simple, but I definitely need two hands. So on the solenoid itself, this white tab right here, I had to lift up. So you see, get my thumbnail underneath there. I had to lift up on that white tab there in the middle, lift up on that this way. Went ahead and pulled up on it. And then with my other hand, I grabbed the body. The body right here. Not the wires, the body of the wiring. And I pulled it out, yank on the wires, so you're gonna have yourself a bad day. And not my solenoid. Old solenoid is free. Variable sense force, janky, whatever you want to call it. Let's go find ourselves our new one. All right, guys, here's the old one, and here's the new one. And I always like to match part for part. Everything matched up online, but until it comes in, you never really know. And I'd say that that is an identical match. Now, I'm sure smart people out mean, I'm sure if I uh, took my ohms meter and ran some logical tests, I could figure out that it actually was a solenoid that was bad. But we are where we are. We're going ahead and toss a new one in. And based on all the evidence, it appears to be that it's the shift solenoid that's causing the issues. This was being intermittent. So we got the new one. Let's go and toss it in and uh, install it with the exact reverse. So we are halfway there, guys. All right, guys. First things first, go ahead and reinstall the connector. And you don't have to pull up on that tab. You just got to push it in. So go ahead and take it, slide her in until you hear a nice satisfying pop. And again, push from the black part from the body. Don't jank on the wires. You're going to possibly have a real bad day. If you damage those wires, then you got to change the whole valve body. And that's a whole other process, guys, that you don't really want to go through. Then you take the solenoid, place it right back where you got her. Grab the bolt with the washer. Start it by what, guys? So how do we start it in there? By hand always start a bolt by hand if you have the ability i understand sometimes in life that's not a hundred percent a possibility based on angles and distance and so forth but always start it by hand if you can in this case we can so we're going to okay mm -hmm. all right lefty lucy so then lie down tidy. I'll go ahead and twist it instead of, so I can further start it by hand instead of working the wrench. There we go. Nice and hand tight. Alright, next we're gonna take our pan and put her back in place. back where she belongs and I went ahead and I grabbed one of the bolts grabbed the big bertha bolt there I know she went right here I'll go ahead and put her back that way she's held in place and it's not going to slip on me as I go to insert the other bolts and notice what I'm doing I'm starting it by hand why would I do that why wouldn't I just go in there with a big wrench or an impact well, guys, because you don't want to strip the threads. You don't want to strip the bolt. You don't want to damage your valuable, valuable pan that you worked so caringly hard to remove. Start it by hand. And then you can go in with all the tools you want. Well, that's not true. Then you go in with the right tools. All right, guys, so we got these top four bolts in. And I'm starting this one by hand. I had to use the extension and the deep socket 5 16 socket so I can actually uh, get it in there but notice I'm still using my hand I'm not using a wrench it's okay to elongate your hand by using implements to start it just make sure you take the wrench off all right we got all the bolts put back in started by hand and then I went ahead with my wrench and I tightened the ball down now it's time to reinstall the deadening mat now I've taken her out from the bottom so it only makes sense to pull it back through the same way. There we go. Okay. Just got 
work around so that you can get her over top of the transmission drain. Well, fill tube actually. I don't want to call it a dipstick because they don't give you a dipstick for this particular transmission. There we go. And the dead man just butts right back up against there. Boom. And we're installed. I know that wasn't pretty. But she's in there. All right, next, we put the connector back on. Let's go ahead and push her on there and then pull back till she clicks. Boom. Give her a nice firm tug to make sure that's exactly where it needs to be. Next up, we'll reinstall the battery box. Battery box and bolt it back in. Now we'll take our radiator, <laughs> not windshield washer fluid. That's a radiator on the top. A radiator reservoir, overflow tank. And we'll shimmy back through there. We're definitely gonna have to top it off because we definitely lost some fluid. There we go, get in there. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm back up underneath and then she just slides back into her bracket all right slid back in the bracket need the two hands for that then we'll take the hose and connect it back on that nipple down there hose connects back in the bottom of the reservoir nice solid connection last but not least let's put that battery back in there Okay, right in place there. Turn her up. Get our clamp. Get our bolt. Starting it by, say it with me. Hey. Alright, and last but not least, the actual connection of the battery. Now, when connecting a battery together, negative is connected last. When taking a battery off, negative is disconnected first because that's the direction electricity flows from. It actually flows, contrary to popular belief, it actually flows from negative to positive. Now we're going to get power. And there you go, guys. With that, we changed our variable speed a transmission shift, our VLP solenoid sensor, and she will no longer stall when going from reverse into drive. Remember, that was the original problem. When she went, the owner went from reverse into drive, the vehicle would stall. We shouldn't have that issue any further, all right? We went ahead and took care of that. All right, guys, and there you go. We changed out the transmission shift solenoid on this 2014 Dodge Grand Caravan with the, with the 62TE62 Tom Edward style transmission. Very common issue I'm seeing pop up online. People having issues with the vehicle not shifting, stalling when it's shifting, rough shifting. This one had the stalling issue going from reverse into drive. It ran just fine in reverse, but when you put it in drive, she wanted to stall out on you. Solenoid is 99.9% .9 going to be culprit on that. If not, it's going to be the entire valve body, which we were looking right at. We we're staring right at it, but we went for what was the good enough option, and that was the solenoid. We went ahead and swapped that out. If you guys have any comments or questions, drop those below. Please like, subscribe, let us know what kind of vehicles you want us to work on, what kind of issues you're having on your vehicles, so we can get those fixed for you. And I hope seeing this video made things a little easier for you guys to take a minute out of your day and do some maintenance. Catch you next time.